Enséñenos a vosotros es una canción. Hi guys, this is Judith with Little Bit of Pixie Face Painting. I'm going to be doing a series of tutorials. We're going to be going over safety materials, where to get your supplies, and what techniques to use. Let us hear the music. Here are some important safety tips. Make sure that the materials are always clean and disinfected before use. Uh, it is important that you make sure that all your materials are FDA approved and non-toxic and are safe to apply on children's faces. It is also important that when you apply makeup to the child's lips, that you're using a new utensil every time so that you're not transferring bacteria. Make sure that you don't face paint on somebody who has cold sores, broken skin, a fever, or a cold, so it's also you're not transferring bacteria. So here are the basic materials you're going to need for face paint. You're going to need to have brushes. I buy mines at Michael's. In the back it shows you what kind of strokes you can do with these brushes and I think they're really inexpensive so they're a good buy. Um, you have to have face painting cakes. They're made for face painting. They look like this or you can use rainbow cakes which look like this. Uh, we're going to be going over where to purchase them later and what brands are is. You're going to be needing water. I use this container because it has a coil inside and it helps me uh, clean out my brushes. You're going to need a mirror because kids are going to want to see their face as soon as you're done with it. Maybe even while you're doing it, I recommend that you wait until the last minute to show them what you're doing. And then um, I also always try to add blush to little girl's cheeks if I'm doing princess or something girly. So you might want to carry a brush and a, um, a blush brush and some blush and a glitter. Make sure that the glitter is safe because um, girls love to sparkle. It's good to carry hair clips because um, even boys nowadays have a lot of hair covering their face and it's really hard to paint around it. So you want to make sure that you have something to pull their hair back. Um, some people use lip gloss. I recommend that you don't apply the lip gloss directly to this child's lips because you never know when you can be transferring bacteria. So I get these Q-tips. I squeeze it onto the Q-tip and make sure not to reapply it onto the tube. Something else you might need are gonna be these wonderful sponges and a spray bottle with water to damp your sponge or damp your face painting cake. Okay guys, so there's a lot of brands out there for face painting. Make sure that they're all F FDA approved before you choose. But some of the brands that are out there are Snazaroo, which is the most economic. Um, it's good for beginners. There's Wolf, there's Paradise, there's Crayolan, uh, Fab, Tag. And so there's a lot of different brands. But my personal favorite, um, best for line work is Wolf. And they're great because they're stackable and you can just take a whole bunch of them, stack them as high as you want. Uh, another brand is Paradise. They carry some of these rainbow cakes and they're great because you can use with a flat brush an, uh, an array of different colors at the same time. Silly Farm, if you want to purchase supplies at sillyfarm.com, they carry these arty cakes and they also show you on the website how you can use them for what designs you can use them. You carry uh, multiple colors at the same time. Paradise carries solid colors as well, um, as does Wolf. You want to make sure that you have some solid colors for when you're doing like masks and stuff like that. This is a fab um, makeup cake and it's really shimmery so they have really beautiful unique colors. If you're a beginner, I would recommend that you get a simple cake instead of investing in these. These cost about $10 to $15. Uh, well, something like this might cost you $40 but if you get a variety of the Primary colors, you should be good if you're just doing family events or events at home with your own kids, so you don't need to invest in the bigger ones. If you want to have your own business, then I recommend that you invest in the big kids. You can get some of these supplies online. You can check uh, sillyform.com, carries almost all the brands. You can also, if you live in the LA area, you can go to the Cinema Secrets or the Names uh, Beauty Supply. And I personally get mine as close as to my house as I can, which is a store called Bayasos, and it's in Boyle Heights, so it's up to you, but if you go online, you should be able to see an array of prices and brands and what you feel that you're gonna like the best. Okay guys, so the most important technique that you're gonna learn for face painting is gonna be working on your line work. So what you wanna make sure is that you have a thin brush. This is a uh, number five Craft Smart. You can get these at the supply store. Um, you want to make sure that you load up your brush. 
take off any excess water and then you want to um, run your brush through the face painting cake and you want to kind of swirl as you're loading it with paint so that the hairs of the brush are always nice and neat. Um, another technique is use your pinky to balance yourself. Some people don't do it because uh, they have a hard time not smearing with their pinky but I use my pinky, it helps me balance. So you want to make sure that if you're going to make a thin line, you press really lightly on your brush to make a thin line, you don't press hardly at all. And then as you want the lines to get thicker, you put a little bit more weight on your brush. And then lastly, if you wanna make a really thick line, you really lay down the brush. You wanna make sure that you practice this a couple times. I'm practicing on my hand because you're not always gonna have a model around. You wanna stay in the habit of practicing. So, I mean, you can end up with lines all over your arm, but as long as you develop the technique, it should be all good. So once you've uh, mastered how to make your lines, you start making swirls, and you're gonna see that if you watch any face painting tutorials or face painting designs, a lot of them have swirls. They're very famous, so you're gonna, it's the same technique where you press and lift, but you start curving it. So you're pressing down and lifting. Pressing down and lifting. Pressing down and lifting. So it's basically, this is usually helps as an embellishment around the eyes or around any pattern that you're doing. You want to make sure that you know how to do your swirls. And they're called teardrops. They're also referred to as teardrops. So if you're making a tiger and you're making the patterns that go on the forehead or around the eye, this is basically what you're doing. You're pressing and lifting. So this is a, a pattern that I would put underneath the tiger's eye or in the tiger's forehead. Like that. Okay guys, so another technique for blending is using your seafoam sponge. So you wanna make sure you have a water spray bottle. You wanna spray your sponge. You don't want, it, you, you don't want any water to come out. You just want it damp. And then you can load up your colors. Make sure it picks it up really, really good. And from there, you can start sponging away. This is something you can do when you're doing an over the eye butterflies. This kids feel much safer having a sponge dab on their face than having a, a pointy brush come at their eyes. So you can put in one color and if you want to blend it into another color, you want to make sure you pick it up nice and thick if you if you're no if you loaded too much water and it's too runny you can always dab it with the back if you want them to blend better you can always dab it with the back you see how they turn into two colors if you want to add another color you can use another um, sponge this one's stained it's not dirty it's just stained you want to make sure you spray it not too much water but just enough to pick up Blend colors however you want. Dab, dab, dab. Use the back to blend one into the other. And there you go. That's it. This is something you can do over the eye if you wanted to turn it into a butterfly or a mask. You can use multiple colors, blend them into each other, make them look like they were meant to be together. Okay guys, so another more advanced technique is using rainbow cakes in which you, you get to use an array of colors and blend them at the same time. And you need a flat brush to do this. So you wanna make sure you load up your brush, take off any excess water. If you have too much water, the colors are gonna bleed into each other. You wanna load your um, colors that you're gonna be using and you wanna go back and forth, back and forth so you have a strong consistency like sour cream. And then um, depending on what you're doing, if I want to do a butterfly, I might just come out and bring it back in and then do another one, kind of, kind of like a heart. And then I would just outline that um, with my black.
But um, you can also do flowers or hearts. You want to do a heart. You want to make sure that you load your brush as many times as you need. It has strong, rich colors. So that would be a heart, and if I wanted to continue, I can do a flower. Okay. A little bit more color. And so using rainbow cakes really speeds up the process of your face painting. It, it gives you a crazy color combination that is hard to do when you're blending on your own. So I really recommend getting rainbow cakes and developing this technique. Okay guys, so those were just some quick tips and tricks for face painting. I hope you guys enjoyed them. If you want to see some more of my work, you can always log on to www.littlebitterpixie.com. And there's going to be more tutorials to come, so I hope you guys enjoy. Have a good one.